Hi friends, I put together a video of how I grow microgreens for my own personal consumption. Um, I have a, a, a hydroponic microgreen system that is automated and uh, I wanted to show how much work is involved in running this type of a system to get enough microgreens to eat every day. This is a long video. I show all the details of what I do. Um, maybe too much information for most people, but uh, if you're interested in growing microgreens for your own personal use, you might find something worthwhile in this video, even though it's a long one. Maybe set it on uh, 1.5 times normal speed. Enjoy. So I'm actually a day late here and um, my sunflowers are doing quite well. They're, the, the biggest ones are a little bit too far along, but that's okay. Most of them are good. And the broccoli have dried out in the back here and that's too bad. Um, but I will harvest the rest of it. So here's some of the equipment that I'll be using. Um, the red bowl, the uh, solid tray, and the, the pail. Also, I have a salad spinner back here. And this has all been washed and sprayed with a sanitizing solution. I start out by removing the uh, sunflowers, take the sensors out, and um, move them to the solid tray. I have this insulation here, which I will remove. That insulation collar helps um, keep the germination and the growth more equal across the entire tray. Five hundred and four grams for the uh, sunflowers. Okay, let's take these sunflowers and um, we will wash them, float the seeds out, seed hulls out. And I'll just move them around a bit. And uh, we'll let them sit there for a while. And I've cleared the bowl out, uh, getting ready to harvest the broccoli. Here's what the sunflowers look like. Uh, no mold mainly healthy looking roots. It's too bad these dried out a little bit too much. One hundred forty grams with the uh, broccoli. Okay, now I'm getting ready to dry the 
sunflowers. Got a fan here. Doesn't really need a lot of wind, just a little bit. And I have a salad spinner here. Salad spinner needs to be a little wet, otherwise it's squeaky. Okay, so this is semi-dry, and uh, let's put it on the tray. And uh, do that again. So I've got a little bit left, and I'll come back for them. And let's. Uh, I'll just set this over here because my next job is going through the sunflowers and uh, removing hulls and uh, picking out any roots that happen to get in the harvest. So here's the last bit. It's 
So what I'd like to do now is just kind of uh, spread it out. And I do not wash the broccoli. This has started to dry, but it probably needs a few minutes. And here is the broccoli. The broccoli is pretty dry already. Just try to uh, it in by hand. Sometimes you get some seeds. I mean it's not a problem to eat seeds but if there's too many I just rip them out. Okay. So while those are drying, I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup. I got to clean this bowl, and I have to clean up that pail and the uh, salad spinner. So this is a sanitizing solution. It's one part bleach Oops. to um, ten parts water. Uh, don't breathe the droplets, and it can stain your clothes. Uh, don't let it touch plants either. So I'll just uh, clean all the holes out of this thing. And just give it a... Oops. sanitizing And we've got a bowl to clean. So this stuff is all cleaned up and uh, waiting for the next batch. It's 
important to have a screen. I'll take this. And uh, this is all going in the compost. Here's some more waste. More for the compost. going to mix this up a bit, see how dry it is. It's about ready to package. Okay, I've got these deli containers ready. I hope that's enough. Keep looking for uh, holes while you do this. Try to make sure the product going out is high quality. Day. So let's take these upstairs and put them in the fridge. So I have one left over. This is uh, 526, May 26, and it's June 3. I usually only eat them for five days and after the sick day they go to the compost. It's not moldy, it's probably still good to eat. 
but um, the quality does go down, so I generally like to eat only the highest quality. Okay, let's wash the tray. I also washed the uh, scissors off camera, so... And I'll put that in the shelf and let it dry. And there we go. Nothing left there. Oh, I gotta get rid of my waste. Okay, this is gonna be hard with one hand holding a camera, but hopefully I make it to the compost heap without dropping the whole thing. Oops. There's my compost. Sometimes there's worms down there. Now I'll wash these out with water. During the uh, summer I can wash it outside, but most of the year it's too cold, so I try to get off as much as possible, but I'll just rinse it off. You end up having to pull off some of it. Might be, might be a little bit left in there, but pretty clean. This one had paper towel in it. It's broccoli. So 
though this one I think could use a little soak and then it will be easier to clean. So what I'll do is I'll put it in the solid tray and fill it up with water. In a few minutes I'll come back and clean that out. Um, this waste here will go in the compost. Okay, here's what it looks like after a crop. And uh, I'm going to pull out the seed bits by hand and the root hairs as much as I can get by hand. And then I'm going to work through cleaning up the uh, previous grow. There's really not a lot in here. A few seed holes. That's about it. I could not get those uh, root hairs, they're kind of stuck to the tray. So with the um, reservoir pail, I'm just going to pull this all out and drop it into another pail. And this is actually a fertilizer solution. You could use that outside uh, on other plants. I generally dump it down the drain, but um, I think I may be moving more towards uh, finding other places to put it after I finished with it. Okay, let's finish up this tray. Take this stuff to the compost. Okay, let's wash this off. Just cleaning the sink a bit. Solution. Kind of a waste. I could be reusing this in the garden. Okay, this is cleaned out. 
Now I'm going to be filling water for the next grow. So that's how full it is. Okay. Pump, pump hose, pump electric cord. Um, bubbler, air hose, and outlet hose. There we are, just pure water at this point. Okay, so I am adding one teaspoon of bleach. This is a disinfecting dose. This is about the same dose that they recommend to disinfect water before you drink it. Uh, that dose is two to four drops per liter or per quart. And um, then let it sit for 30 minutes and then you can drink it. So what I'm doing is giving it an equivalent of four drops per quart uh, and I'm going to start the pump now and disinfect the uh, entire thing but uh, I'm going to let it sit for a day. Now maybe I don't need to do that but that's, uh, that's the way I've been doing it. So let's start the pump. There we go. And this is a mild bleach solution. Should disinfect uh, microorganisms. Sometimes I come back and spray sanitizing solution, which is a much stronger um, disinfectant. And so I'm going to let uh, the, the um, cycle run, and that's going to pump every six hours. And uh, tomorrow I will come back to uh, work on it on the water some more and plant. Now the pump's done and now it's starting to drain back out the pump. That's the uh, low point of this cycle. And finally I'm going to give my uh, trays a um, sanitizing spray front and back and then I will just let them sit to dry eventually and uh, be ready for tomorrow 
So this is the amount of standing water that's left after the pump. And um, at first I thought that was bad, but now I think it might be good because um, when the roots are able to get out of the trays, then they have that reserve water. So that's it for day one. Harvest day, I should say, not day one. And um, tomorrow I will seed. It is the next morning. The bleach sanitizing solution has been in the bucket and has been pumped up to the tray several times over the course of the night. And here's uh, basically a tray with water. Today we are going to be uh, seeding and getting the nutrient solution ready. So let's uh, check the pH. Bleach raises the pH, it's alkaline, typically what I would expect, something higher than 7, looks like we are at uh, right about 7. Now in order to get 3, oops, in order to get uh, four gallons down to about 5.5 or 5.4 roughly. I know it takes about three teaspoons of pH down. pH down is acidic and it lowers the pH. This is going to, hopefully that will get it close to 5. I start low, 5 is low, because uh, during the course of the grow, it goes up, up, up. So that's step one. My trays have been drying overnight. I don't need the solid tray, but uh, now it's time to put the trays in place. So I use this collar for sunflowers only. It helps a little bit uh, just to keep the uh, uh, germination more even. Push it underneath the cleats. Well, there's one. This is for the broccoli. Okay, just a couple of trays there. Now I have this thing here. See, it's just a screw, and there's an opening there. Push it over, and see if I can do this with one hand. It kind of snaps, and you fold it. It's 
a piece of irrigation tubing that's cut so that clamps things down so it doesn't float. Organic black oil sunflower seed, 200 grams. Hmm, well, so I'm just going to pour this in. I just want a fairly even distribution because what is going to happen is they're all going to float uh, during the flood, at least until they get their roots in. So. You know, you want to distribute them fairly evenly, but they will somewhat self-distribute. Okay, the next step is to take a piece of paper towel, try to center it in there good. So there's not a lot of air trapped underneath. And then just spread it out. The less air underneath, the less it will rise up and float during the uh, flood. So that's about right. Next up is broccoli seed. Fifty grams is what I'm looking for. Now this does need to be uh, distributed a little bit more carefully. Normally I'd move around a little bit more and Okay, not too bad. And that's it for seeding. So I'll just wet everything down. That's really all it needs. So now we're... Oh, one more thing. Make sure the... Um, sensor is in the middle 
roughly in the middle of the tray. And the thermometer sensor should be close to the uh, Arduino sensor uh, just to get a good reading of what's actually happening. And with that, we shut our box and turn it to automatic lighting. Okay, now we're going to do the nutrient solution. And I'm going to start with uh, calcium nitrate. And I'm going to do, for this batch, I'm going to do 6 grams of calcium nitrate. Which is not a lot. Six point two, calcium nitrate. I don't know, I can't even read that. Just to show you how much that is. Whoops. They're round. Hopefully you can see that. So I have some hot tap water and uh, roughly about a liter, but half a liter to a liter. And let's drop it in and stir it up always mix the calcium nitrate in separately from the others because if you don't at a high concentration calcium nitrate binds with some of the other uh, substances and creates kind of a chalk sediment and um, once you get that sediment it's no longer available to the plants Six grams of calcium nitrate in four gallons. So I'm going to get another thing of water. Okay, we did the calcium nitrate. Now let's do the uh, NPK fertilizer. It's 41838. It's a mix for tomato, hydroponic mix. Um, I believe it is the same as Master Blend, maybe Master Blend, and the same amount, 6 grams for this. grams. And we also have some magnesium sulfate, also known as Epsom salt. And this gets half the amount, so three grams. These are really small amounts. <coughs> Epsom salt, three grams. And let's stir that up. In hot tap water again. It dissolves much more easily in hot water. But I don't leave it in hot water for very long. I just, uh, long enough to mix it and then drop it into the full 
reservoir. Fertilizer and Epsom salt. There we go. We now have nutrient solution complete. So once that is done, the seeds are in, and all I have to do is hit the reset button, which should start the pump, and that starts my microgreen box next batch, and uh, I am done for, with this for 10 days. I don't need to touch it again until harvest. So thank you very much for watching. This has been a long video, I know, but uh, it shows you about how much work is involved about an hour the first day and about 15 to 20 minutes the second day. And then you've got um, nine days of just waiting. However, because there are two boxes, you do this cycle every five days so you get a fresh um, fresh grow every five days so that's as low as it gets it just turned the pump just turned off sunflower seeds are floating see what I mean about the bubbles they kind of push up and the seeds the broccoli seeds are kind of floating around too and bunched up that's okay, they will still grow quite well. And now we're draining down and we're off and running with this batch. Thank you so much for watching.